Rebuilding a Stuart Double 10 V steam engine, part 5. Making a pair of new pistons fitted with silicone o-rings. If you're a beginner, this may appear to be quite a daunting task, but you'll have to trust me on this, it's really easy to do. Here are the original gunmetal pistons with oil grooves machined in them. I need to remove the pistons from the piston rods without doing any damage. This is the method that I normally use. In my small Myford lathe, I've clamped the piston in the chuck, and then I clamp the piston rod in the tailstock chuck. I chose to rotate the tailstock chuck to unwind the shaft from the piston, but some viewers may wish to do it the other way round, hold the shaft firmly in the tailstock chuck and rotate the headstock chuck. Either way, the piston is separated from the piston rod. These pistons are supposed to be a quarter of an inch thick and I'm just verifying this with my micrometer. I didn't really need to use the micrometer for this job, but just for certain viewers who like things to be right, I'm showing that it's not the right size, it's a few thou out. Four thou to be exact. And this really doesn't matter. This is the piece of metal I'm going to use to make two new pistons. The original pistons are made from gun metal, my pistons are going to be made from brass. And making pistons from brass is definitely not a good idea if you're going to have metal to metal contact because brass wears out very quickly. But in this case, as I'm using O-rings, the actual piston will be undersized. How much undersized, you may be asking? Well, according to the internet, it says one thou per inch. In this clip, my micrometer tells me that the original gunmetal piston was exactly three quarters of an inch, which is pretty good, really. When these pistons were originally fitted into this engine, when it was fed with steam, the heat would have caused all the metal to expand, and gunmetal expands more than cast iron. Which means that when the engine was in steam, the piston would have been a really snug fit in the cylinder, and the oil grooves would have held the oil so everything was fine. As you can see, I'm starting to machine the brass blank, and at this early stage of the job, do not machine the brass blank down to a finished size. As you will see later on in the video, the piston will be finished when it's mounted on its piston rod. And talking about piston rods, here is the piston rod. I'm just verifying that it's a 4BA thread. Before anyone writes in, yes, I do know that there is a mark on the metal, which is the piston blank. And yes, I am also aware that I haven't finished facing this part. Please continue to watch the video before criticizing my efforts. After centre drilling the part, I'm drilling quite a long way down this piece of brass using a tapping size drill for 4BA. In this clip, you can clearly see the chunk out of the piece of brass where I didn't face it at the correct depth all the way along. You may also have noticed the depression left by the centre drill. The next part of the job is to carefully tap the hole in the centre using a 4BA tap. As a lubricant, I'm using WD-40 and yes, I am aware that WD-40 isn't a lubricant, but it works quite well when you're tapping brass. Or aluminium, or any metal really. The next part of the job is to face across the front to remove this depression in the centre caused by the centre drill. And with a bit of luck, it should remove the mark that are left on the front of the metal. Sometimes piston blanks are counter-drilled to support the piston rod. But on this engine, the pistons weren't made in this way. The shoulder on the piston rods are screwed firmly up against the piston. Time now to part off the first of the piston blanks. I'm using a ruler to set the position of the parting tool. And once this piston blank is parted off, it will be slightly over the required finish size of a quarter of an inch. All finish turning for both of these pistons will take place once they are mounted on the piston rods and not before. After parting off the first piston, I faced across the front of the rest of the bar. My parting tool is quite small and wanders about a bit, so I like to make sure that everything is nice and square, and that's why I'm facing across the front. This next sequence is a repeat of what you've already seen. I drilled the hole tapping size for 4BA, and here I'm tapping it 4BA, followed by carefully parting off the second piston blank. I don't need to do any more work on this brass bar, so it can go into my box of small pieces of brass bar. Now the time has come to make both these piston blanks a quarter of an inch thick. And in no time at all, according to my micrometer, 
this is about two thou larger than it needs to be. But that's not a problem because I will be facing across the front of the piston once it's assembled and here I'm screwing the piston rod into the piston blank. And here are the embryo pistons connected to their respective piston rods. In this clip I've put one of the old pistons in the chuck. I centred it by pushing it in gently with the tailstock and I'm about to drill a hole through the centre of it. Why am I doing this you may be thinking? Well I'm making a large washer which will support the piston blank when I clamp the piston rod in the chuck. Luckily my three jaw chuck in the old Boxford is quite accurate. None of them are perfect but it's accurate enough for this job. If you have an accurate collet set that fits in your lathe, now is the time to use it. And one more time, for the final time, I'm facing across the front. Followed by turning the piston blank approximately one thousandth of an inch undersize. That's one thou under three quarters of an inch. This is the penultimate cut. And up to a point I'm using the piston that I drilled to confirm that I'm getting very near to the finished size. The best thing to do now is to use the cylinder as a gauge. And I'm pleased to announce that this piston is currently exactly three quarters of an inch in diameter. Which is nice, but for an O-ring installation the piston does need to be slightly smaller. So here I'm taking a very tiny amount off. I tried the cylinder on the piston blank a second time and it's perfect. Now it's time to cut the groove. You need to be very careful when doing this because you've only got the thickness of the piston rod supporting the work. Sometimes you can actually centre drill the end of the piston rod and put a live centre in there. But on such a small engine all I have to do is be very gentle. In this part of the clip I'm using a needle file to remove any sharp edges. And that's it. I just need to remove the finished piston from the chuck but before doing that, I'm verifying that the groove is the correct width and depth. Next part of the job, fit the piston ring to the piston using plenty of oil and try it in the cylinder. And if it fits OK and slides up and down nice and easily, you've got it right. This clip shows the second piston and I'm about to fit a ring to this as well. And the good news is, this piston fits beautifully too. When I move the piston up and down in the cylinder, I can feel very little resistance. Just enough to be steam tight and air tight. If the pistons had have been tight, I would have put them back in the lathe and cut the groove a bit deeper. Here I've temporarily screwed the pistons into the crossheads, just so I can see them going up and down, for no other reason. I just love the poetry in motion of reciprocating engines. And that's it for this episode. I'd like to say as always, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.